Hi everybody, it's Q and welcome back to my tapes. So <laughs> I just have I just have a question. Is Kelly Stams gonna still be able to make these videos talking about how she makes forty thousand dollars a month if people don't want to see her gallivant across Boston, New York, Florida, Shamika, Doranda? Okay, Felicia, okay, the song is stuck in my head. Editing me, please just roll the tape. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You know, Q, as much as I'd like to say maybe I didn't know, I think I had a clue. I think I knew when I posted my first tiramisu video. I knew when I posted those videos on the Greyhound bus to Santa Monica. I knew that there was a chance that I would be sitting here on this couch today. So yeah, how does it feel? It feels great. Wow. Thank you again, Kelly Sims, for coming on the show. Up next, Nicki Minaj is here to perform Seeing Green, and afterwards, talk to us about her reemergence into the rap game. Coming right up on Late Night Tips. If you enjoyed those snippets and clips, you have to let me know. I am literally working on something. I am ideating stuff. I write different little sketches and ideas, so if you guys wanna see like a late night snippet, then let me know. You have to let me know. That's the first thing. Second thing, I lead the pack like my back's to them. <laughs> you're gonna have to take away my phone. You're gonna have to, um, you're gonna have to take away this phone. Hi everybody, my name is Q and welcome to my tapes. Welcome to another episode of The Blueprint. An episode mini series, episodic mini series, where I essentially want to help ideate ideas and brands for creators so that they don't have to do what I don't know what people are doing. Like in the last blueprint video, we were talking about scheming, scheming, teething, and scamming. And obviously, I don't know Kelly Stamps, one. Number two, I don't know Kelly Stamps to be a scammer. But it came from that concept. Like, I want to push my brain. I want to push my brain. Like, I do some of this in real life. That's also why. But it's just like, is it, is it that you guys don't have people on a team? Do you not have, like, a manager who is, like, consistently doing the market research? Hopefully, creators don't have to resort to different types of things just to get money when they already have distribution. So, obviously, we are going to be talking about Ms. Kelly Stamps. <laughs> Okay, I think we need to start here. Who is Kelly Stamps? Who is she? Who is ha? She is, I would describe her honestly as an individual, straightforward, tries to live as straightforward as possible. I don't necessarily want to say a minimalist. Um, someone who likes to experience life, someone who likes to experience food and the simple joys of life, someone who just wants to take it easy, okay? Take it easy, take it easy, you know? And she's black and it's, it's an experience, it's an experience. So if you have, you know, if you wanna see more of like her personality, that's the best way I can describe her, like an individual. Does that make sense? Like an individual like person. Wow, like, yeah, yeah. But if you guys wanna find out more information about her, obviously, you, if you're watching this, you're probably coming for her. So, you know, I'm sure you know who she is, but if not, it's Kelly Stamps on YouTube and you can go find her video. So I wanna split this video up into a three fork. Also, she is a tiramisu connoisseur, okay? A tiramisu connoisseur. I did not forget, wow. <laughs> okay, so when she's not a tiramisu expert and judge, chef, connoisseur, you know, she kind of talks about her life. Um, and one of the things that she talks about is her money and her money situation. And it is, let me note, because obviously I did my research, right? I have my notebook here. So I must note that in her monthly income videos, she does not really feel comfortable um, as far as I, I'm, hopefully I'm still current. The $40,000 video came out two weeks ago, I believe. She does not really talk like talking about specifics about her brand deals, um, but she does kind of go over her AdSense in depth because she's like, why not? Um, but in a previous video, like a few months ago, she did mention that with some of her brand deals, she does, she, at the time it was like, I believe three to 5,000 or five to 10,000, but I'm sure now it's more around like eight to maybe $15,000 um, per post or per like deal. So I thought to myself, Bringing back to the question of the original for, to, at the beginning of the video, what is she gonna do when like maybe people don't wanna see her 
do all of this stuff anymore? What if people don't want to see her talk about her minimalist life anymore? What if people don't want to see her fly in Italy tiramisu? What if people don't want to see her gallivant across Manhattan and Soho? I think she grab, she goes around like Brooklyn or whatever. Like what if people don't want to see that anymore? Like what's going to become of the income? What's going to become of like the empire of Miss Kelly Stamps? And so I would like to just ideate some ideas um, and I'm not actually going to mention all of them which brings me to my disclaimer. If you are a creator and you are trying to think of how to ideate this for yourself or you are a talent manager that comes across this video, yeah? Don't be slick and put it in the comments. You better just email me, <laughs> email me. Okay, y'all are acting like, like I said, I do this like in real life, partially. Let me not give y'all too many details, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I'm just saying email me um, maybe what you need is like a consultant someone who can like really try and like help you specifically um, so you know breaking down certain things will be really hard to do over the uh, over comments which brings me to my next thing I actually saw a really cool question about um, breaking down the tech aspect of how someone could go about like that travel platform on like a costly budget and if you're not in tech and obviously I don't that's like I, I want to talk about it and explain that to you. So don't, I didn't forget your question there. Um, but I'm trying to think of different ways that I can answer commenters' questions who are not talent managers or large creators. Don't be slick now. I, I'm not... Listen, my third eye is open yet. My third eye is open. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So for Kelly Stamps, I... I needed a few things. I actually thought of five things, but we're actually going to go over three prongs, a three prong approach. It is going to be split between a partnership, edutech or education kind of like courses. And then also the last thing that I thought about was angel investing. So one of the things that Kelly Stamps really likes to talk about is I mentioned like the simplicity of life. You know, she's not trying to do too much. Even now she's, she's really started to talk more and more in her videos about how does she even want to do YouTube anymore like that? Like, is, is this really all it's cracked up to be? Because I kind of started this as a hobby, you know, and it's great that I'm making money from the algorithm, ooh, but it's just like, I don't really, I don't know. I don't know. Could I see myself doing this for a few more years? I don't know. In the way that I'm doing it, I'm not sure. She's talked about how she wants to be probably, I think she's actually starting to be a pilot right now and how she wants to venture into that and have that be like a full-time job and make this return back to being a hobby um, amongst either going back to school. I think that was a school that she was referencing in that video. So that's something that I started to peep as I kind of went through and I watched, <laughs> I had to go through and rewatch some of her videos and take some notes. So, you know, Kelly Stamps, you know, she's not kind of a go, 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 go person. And at the end of the day, actually, let me make a disclaimer. I've also said this before, multiple videos, I think most of all the videos that I've made on this channel I don't know these people <laughs> I don't know these people right um so and obviously whatever people present online which I've also said before we don't obviously know the full story so she might be like a quote unquote go 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 hustle person but I, I I wouldn't know you know what I mean I'm just gonna go off of what she has presented and what she has said hopefully verbatim um or what or if someone has like receipts right as per <laughs> The Teven and this. Okay, let me stop. Let's go into it. So yeah, I think for Kelly Stamps, in this case, knowing what I know, and also knowing that she also has mentioned that she she keeps her work schedule to about three days a week. She has two since since she moved um, from Boston, she was able to start posting more. But I believe that's two videos a week. So it went from only posting like on Tuesdays to now I think posting on Tuesdays and Fridays or Tuesdays and maybe like Saturdays or Sundays. Um, and then she does most of like her writing work in like the midweek, like Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. Monday, et cetera, et cetera. So she's kind of been able to think about more content, right, to put out, but she's still not trying to push over that stress meter. She's described her work as more of freelancer. She said that she does feel like a freelancer, um, and that's how she would describe her work schedule and how she goes about it seven to 10 hours a day. Yeah. So with that in mind, that was kind of how I started to think about what ideas could be for her. Thinking about that, and obviously don't let these people, don't let these gurus lie to you on these internets. Starting a business, like to be frank, and I'm sure you guys know this, like unless you're a trust fund baby, okay? Unless you trusty, unless you Bill, unless you Zuckerberg, like these people came from affluent families. Like the, if you don't come from a family with capital already, then unfortunately, I don't know what sort of lie people are. I don't know what people are insinuating by like, you're gonna get into a venture and like, you're not gonna have to, 
do some work unless you have money right unless you have money to just throw at it and then buy yourself a seat be like a ceo be on the board and call it a day so this isn't going to be without any sort of work but i did try to think of ideas that were as like minimal as possible or ideas that if you found an operator the logistics and operations of this would literally be out of your hands and you could just focus pretty much on like the promotion and the content creation which is why I said, I wanted to start the blueprint. I wanna push my brain. I really wanna think about these things. So once again, repeating, what are the three ideas? The first idea is, okay, a ghost kitchen. I think that, oh my God, I'm gonna get into it. Don't worry, I'm gonna get into it. But Kelly Stamps would be, do really good with maybe doing a soft launch of like a ghost kitchen. And she could call it like Kelly Stamps tiramisu. I'm waving my hand. Kelly Stamps tiramisu. It would be virtual. She wouldn't have to worry about having a physical bakery. And then people could order the food online on like maybe like a driving app and or like a delivery app or pick it up from like the restaurant. And that could be one of the ventures. So essentially Kelly Stamps tiramisu. I'm going to talk about this. This is actually really exciting. Um, side note, I did have an idea that she could do a partnership with um, Italy. And I did I did look into like the director of operations and all of that. And I'm, I just tried to look into it, but I have some thoughts on why that may not necessarily be the best partnership. And so if you are Kelly Stamps or if you are her manager and you're like, why not broker a deal with like an Italy and then use like your direct to audience influence to get that deal instead of doing this, then go ahead and go ahead and email me. Cause there is a reason why I'm, I'm thinking about this instead. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, go ahead and I will answer it in the comments below. Or if you wanna email me, go ahead and email me. So the next idea to reiterate is Edutech. I think that she's actually made some really helpful videos about project management and how she goes about planning her schedule, which I like. One thing about Kelly Stans, if you can give it to her, is at least she'll be straightforward. I said this, straightforward. The girl, she don't miss, listen. You ask her a question, she'll answer the question. There was a video that she had done a couple of months back talking about like the day in the life of a YouTuber. But if you if you pay attention to like the video and some of the videos that she kind of makes with these titles, like she really does give some really helpful tips that I think are great for keeping sanity. Which is why I thought it was really interesting that she compared the work that she did to being a contractor, a freelancer, maybe like a part-time like consultant. You know what I mean? And that's a very specific description because if you've done freelancing, you know how that can be like. And I'm sure maybe this is stable for her now, but obviously the, you know, whatever fears that she has or whatever things that she thinks about, which is why she talks about saving and a part of like keeping things to a minimal in her life, because who knows what will happen when people don't want to like see these videos anymore, right? Right. So I actually think she should make like a course. She should make like a cohort course and partner, I actually want to mention some company names, but I have some contentions that I want to talk about here. We're going to talk about black people in tech in a second um, when I get to this section. So yeah, I think she could do like a cohort based course where she essentially charges, charges a premium to other kind of maybe larger creators on like how she goes about her project management lifestyle and how they need to do that. I don't know the specifics as of late. I don't know if she dropped her current manager or like her management. Um, a few few a couple months back she would mention them but now she doesn't and so i'm not sure she still has a manager i'm not quite sure um i know that she doesn't like do her own negotiation as as far as i'm still aware but i don't think she has a talent manager anymore if that makes sense um but essentially what i'm trying to say is that i think that a project management course on how she goes about really sitting down and getting her work done in a three-day span as a larger creator who has to put out content on her own and who handles her own production would be very valuable to a lot of creators who are in her realm or a little bit under. And so a cohort course like that, where maybe she has some videos or has some classes where she has, uh, has in person, right? Like a workshop, but then she should go ahead and document the data of how I go about doing this in a structured manner so that she doesn't, so, so, so that People can just keep buying the course, if that makes sense. So not only is it not scheming, not only is it not scamming, but it's also like just very helpful. You know what I mean? Like not some of these courses that are not helpful. They're trying to sell you failure. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that like you're poor and you don't have all these resources. Like, no, this could be really helpful. And so we'll talk about the marketing for that as, as well and like who she could go about doing this deal with. The third idea, just to reiterate, is some angel investing. So I know that she's done a sponsorship with Robinhood and that was, I think, five months ago. So 
before the, before the stuff going on with Robin Hood. Um, but I'm sure she might have like an accountant or like a financial person, possibly. Obviously, like I said, people don't be talking about their life like that. They don't say everything. Come on now. They don't say everything. She even made a video. Stop telling people your business. Um, but yeah, I think she could go into angel investing if she is not already and not in the typical like stocks and bonds, all that stuff. She should go into an angel investing as it pertains to SaaS products. And specifically from black founders, I think that would be really cool. Like people who they're already making revenue, they can give her equity, right? She can do some sweat work, right? It's called like sweat equity. So not only would maybe these companies pay her to partner with her, but they would also give her some equity, but also she could utilize her distribution to help the company, right? And then obviously after she's done the work that one time, she still has the equity, but now she's making money Front with a company that she's done work for and that will continue to grow. Um, so let's go ahead and put another disclaimer. I put so many disclaimers. Doing business is risky, right? Angel investment is risky. All of these kind of ideas are risky. So there's no obviously guarantee, um, but these are kind of some ideas that I was thinking about. And so at this point in time, let me go ahead and break it up. Phase one, Kelly Stamps Tiramisu. So, when it comes to Kelly Stamps and the tiramisu, this is this is essentially the blueprint for that. First, it is important to mention a statistic. Oh my God, I had to write this down. So um, according to the USDA, 75% of restaurant operators consider out, outside dining to be a, their best growth opportunity. Um, for those of you that don't know, restaurants actually, they have a really slim profit margin. They don't really make a lot of money. Um, there's a lot of overhead. Um, and what do I mean by that? They have to pay for obviously labor. Um, they have to pay for, you know, real estate. You know, they have to pay for materials, food, packaging, et cetera, et cetera. And so a lot of what these restaurants have been doing is they have been opening up what is called virtual restaurant development for people. And essentially, if you have a virtual brand where you have done the marketing, all you have to do is partner with these restaurant operators and say, hey, can y'all cook this food? And essentially, when people order it from this app, you guys can make the food, you give it off to the driver, and people will eat the food all without the primary person not needing to own a physical restaurant. So not only will that help people in the community, right? But that'll also be able to make her money. Not only that, but she doesn't have to handle those operations and logistics, even even when she would hire like an operations person or like a manager or someone, a business person to help her do this, right? So that's the first thing. A lot of restaurant operators are starting to really shift their business model and they're really looking for partnerships where somebody already has distribution and marketing can partner with them they will go ahead and prep cook package the food and people can go ahead and deliver it this is so exciting because of the next thing i have to say kelly stamps this is what she should do so this is what she should do so because this is risky, risky, right? You don't want to, she doesn't need to do this everywhere. She doesn't need to look for all these restaurants all over the United States. That's not the plan. That is, that is a bad idea, actually. That is not what you want to do. This is what she should do. She needs to go ahead and pull her analytics, right? She needs to go ahead and pull her analytics of most engaged audiences, right? Y'all need to put that in Excel, Tableau. I don't know. Get, email me, email me, <laughs> email me. Um, she needs to take all of the data of where like her most engaged fans are, which is probably in the United States. She should go ahead and specify what areas has the most engagement with the most people. So for example, let's say if Kelly Stamps, I'm just guessing, let's say like 93% of Kelly Stamps' audience is from the United States. And then 73% of those people in the United States are all like in New York. This is what she should do. She should go ahead and say, okay, let's do a soft launch with, or, or like New York, New York City, like New Jersey, that area. This is what she should do. She should essentially partner with like maybe three or four, um, like, yeah, three or four restaurants in New York to essentially make this treat for her to sell physically. But then about two out of those four restaurants or bakeries she should ask that they do like the ghost kitchen setup where they can sell her Kelly Stamps tiramisu. And so this way, she knows where her most engaged audience is. She knows where they reside. She has four, uh, she has, um, she has four pop-up locations that she can appear to during the summer where she can essentially be like, hey, I'm coming out with my own tiramisu. If you don't come to the pop-up, that's fine. But if you're in your New York City, the Brooklyn, 
Manhattan, Soho area. I know they're not the same. I know they're not the same area. Um, you can essentially, you're, you're able to order it and get it delivered to you via, um, via a food delivery app. And so that would be a really, really good way to do it. And I think why I really like this idea is because she could partner with black owned bakeries in New York City. Like I said, um, restaurant operators are currently bakery operate the food operator, you know, people restaurant, you know, I say restaurant, but I also mean like food businesses. So like bakeries, et cetera, et cetera. They are constantly looking for ways to like diversify and, and not minimize their overhead, but they, they have to find a way to make up the difference. Like how can we find a way to make our space make us more money? And so I think this would be a great idea for partnering with black owned bakeries in New York. This would be a, such a great idea. I think it would be so cute. Um, I say cute because I think it's, tir this is Kelly Stamps tiramisu. Great idea, great idea. Um, Oh my gosh, this is a great idea. But also because she can do a limited run. One of the benefits about going into some of these contracts for with these like ghost kitchens is that you don't have some of these long-term contracts that maybe if you owned a physical spot, you would have to consider as a restaurant operator. So this would be a great way for her to be able to directly silo her audience and distribution into coming out with a short stint. And this is what she should do after that. I'm talking too much about this, so I'll finish after this. When she does this launch and she gets the results that she gets, she should go ahead, work with um, her talent manager or work with like a business operator that she partners with to bring this to fruition. And essentially what she should do is go ahead and take in the data from that. Like, how did this go? Right. So that's why it's very important. Don't spread too far. Don't do all these places here and all these places there. You want to really just look for where exactly is a majority of my audience who wants to do this. Another reason why I said this is because as I was doing research, I saw that a lot of black women actually tried to make tiramisu based off of, based off of Kelly Stamp videos. And I don't know if she knows this, but I'm like, this is a prime opportunity for you here. You don't need to do uh, have so much overhead, et cetera, et cetera. How much money should we, would she need to kind of put aside for this? Um, I would say for all of these ideas, probably under 25,000, um, but she probably wants to reserve like another 10,000 or $15,000 just for like consulting or, or just having the operator. So she's not hiring somebody full time, but who can help her supervise all of these business activities or business ventures for her, right? And so that is what I think compensating that person right is one thing but then also like the little things like the promotionals and maybe shooting stuff and obviously maybe if the restaurant has like a small term contract like hey this is what we charge to buy you packaging for your tiramisu this is what we need from you to like have these bags printed etc etc so yeah with that said let's move on to the next idea edutech so like i said um and i'll actually keep this brief she should probably partner with like teachable or maybe even like a black owned SaaS kind of company who helps people create courses and essentially oh my god teachable is like i feel like you just mentioned them they just pop up in like comments especially like on twitter i don't have a twitter but i i just be noticing like they they hear their name everywhere okay but yeah edutech would be a good place for her to start she should essentially package some of the things that she has to do she has a process for make sure that she refines that process goes ahead and films and maybe even like writes or hi hire someone to help her write a process manual of like this is how i'm able to contain my my work of writing and scripting and researching and ideating to about seven to ten hours a day three hours a week or three days a week Right. So that would be a good idea. And then I know that I said cohort based. So this is something else she could do. I'm going to mention a company, Maven. Um, it's owned by this Asian woman. I don't really. West Cow, I believe. You guys don't need to care about that, actually, because I have something to say. I actually think it would be great if she could either work with like, you know, either she works with like a big SaaS company who really does this and they do it well, like a teachable or like maybe a cohort program. That would be that's been it's been going very well for people. But I kind of wanted to put like a slight asterisk. I want to put a slight note that I just feel like, I feel like if you have capital to give and you know that somebody's already doing this and they also do it well and they're black owned, then why not just partner with them? So if the, if the problem is that you don't have that resource list or you don't have a list of these like startups or companies or pre-seed companies or seed companies, series A companies or whatever companies that are already doing this and you'd like to work with them, maybe I can start working on a list. Like if you're from Kelly Stamps camp and you're like, okay, who can I work with to do something like this? Just email me and maybe I can go ahead and do that market research for you to compile a list. Um, so yeah, random, but yeah. 
Next thing is the course. So the last portion that I think she should do is angel investing. I think that creators that, you know, they make a lot of capital. Essentially, you, you, you would have enough money to put into something that is already making money. I think that's also kind of the asterisk for the angel investing. If I made like $50,000, $40,000 a month and somebody told me to angel invest, I would make sure to obviously look for somebody who is in that space, who knows what they're doing. Number one, <laughs> compensate them. Number two, I would also look for make sure that the company that I'm angel investing into is making money. Okay. I don't, this is hot, hot topic. I don't exactly believe in the concept of you know, you have these, you have, you know, the companies that get all this funding, billion dollars, like some of that, some of that is money laundering. Like some of that is money laundering. There's no allegedly there because it's, it's true. Like, no, no, it's actually true. Um, and actually some of these public companies, you can, they publish their financial reports at the end of the year. Like some of these companies aren't making money, but they were, okay, y'all listen very carefully. They were able to get funding from like maybe a rich person. Um, oh my God, should I mention the company? Okay, so like for example, Saudi royal family, they put a lot of their money into Tencent to avoid taxes in Saudi Arabia. Tencent gives money to like an Uber, for example. And then Uber makes sure that they IPO so the funders get their money back but then of course the consumers take up all the risk of paying for their stock and the company is literally not profitable okay <laughs> I broke it down really simply but you can do your own research there's no allegedly about that um but yeah so if I was doing angel investing I would really try and look for companies who are already making a revenue. Like they need to be making a revenue and they actually need to be making like a profit. They actually need to be making a profit. And I think those would be a great place to put your money in because yeah, it might not be a company that's going public or getting all these billions and billions of dollars in funding, which by the way, only few companies, only like less than like a hundred companies are getting that in like a 10 year time frame. So I, you know what I mean? Like, so just the amount of companies that get that so much money are are very few but there are companies that are making revenue that are making a profit and i think that she should invest in them preferably like something in tech like it doesn't need to be like a software as a service it could be like edutech like a teachable platform it could be like someone who's doing like a birch box like a subscription box service it could be someone who's trying to start a franchising i have an idea for that it could be things that are making money you know what i mean so it doesn't need to be when i say when i say tech i don't i feel like that sounds like a black hole and it's like what does that mean what are the what are the you know what are the options in tech there's a lot um but i would say tech is probably where i would reside um in those investments and if it was like a consumer product then i would want to make sure they're doing like what a perch box is doing a dry bar is doing um beauty salon is doing like a distribution is doing like you know what I mean those are really good kind of examples if you don't really want to get too much into that tech space so I said a lot I was talking a lot but I wanted to go through the three prong three fork three prong fork approach for Miss Kelly Stamps this is her blueprint this is her blueprint for maintaining the $40,000 a month. And I would say making more, especially with that course and the angel investing, I think would be a really, really great option for her to consider as she starts to kind of move farther and farther away um, from YouTube as like a job and she wants to kind of return it as a hobby and she just wants to keep her life low key. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. This is a long video. Um, I kind of want to do some housekeeping real quick because it's not the end of the video. So I don't really know if anybody's watching this. So yeah let me go ahead and say this thank you so much for watching <laughs> the next blueprint i'm gonna do is for lydia dinga and how i think she could start a wine Ooh, a wine i think she could do oh, let me take out my glasses sorry i think she could do a wine business or a wine company concept or like a wine collaboration concept and i think that would work really really well um especially where she is in the united kingdom but also in the u.s because a lot of people buy wine so she's probably going to be the next blueprint episode up next thing i want to say is yeah if you guys want me to talk about anything else let me know i kind of want to make another video not the blueprint but just kind of talk about Brini lee and a video that i had just kind of come across about how she said i can't take a break what do you do if this is your job what do you do if like the exploitation that you have to participate in is your job in this way what do you do when you have self-confidence issues in your body but like it is your job to literally show your body and show your presentation 
what do you do if that's what's paying your bills? Like, how can I ever escape this? And I don't really know if I have a solution for that, but I really wanted to discuss that because it's been something I've been thinking about for three years now. Like, what do you do? What do you do? Which is why I think I really want to continue this blueprint series if people want to see them. Um, next thing. Yeah, just let me know what you want to see in general. Um, I don't know. Thank you for listening to another one of my tapes. I am Q and I will see you later. Also, Pete, my hair, I changed my outfit too. Um, I actually have my wash day today. And so I, I'm obviously a fraud. Um, my hair is in twist right now, but I'm gonna detangle and then I'm gonna wash. And then my, so my hair is out, but you know, it's gonna be out, out soon. Yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.